Hello, everybody. You, you still want to be an expert in Windows 2019. This is the right place for you, okay? I try really to share. We can pass more, more, more time. But really, my goal is to make a small resume of what is Windows 2019. The next training will be about 2022. But 2019 is still very used in the world, okay? So let's see now the networking part, okay? So let's start with my DHCP. What is DHCP? DHCP is just a server that will give you an IP address. It's very simple, okay? So you have a pool and each computer, laptop, printer, everything will take an IP on this pool. And if you don't need, again, this IP, you can just, you know, say, I don't want it, and it will go back on the pool, okay? And, and DHCP is an automatic process, okay? And it's, it is more accurate than manually IP configuration because you cannot, you know, go in all your, your 20,000 computer and, and, and add them manually. It's not possible. So to have a DHCP, you must install the role, activate the DHCP, create a scope and set up the option. Okay. Remember something very important is that when a DHCP client wants an IP, he will discover. He will say, hey, 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 guys, where is the DHCP? Okay. So he will do a broadcast. And after the DHCP will offer his services. And after he will request an IP. And after, of course, the DHCP will reply, will say, okay, I'm ready to give you my IP. Remember that with the, when the DHCP list reached 50% of the list time, the client automatically attempts to renew the list. It's a unicast DHCP request, a unicast. If the DHCP client cannot contact the DHCP server, then the client waits until 85% tick tack tick tack tick tack of the lease time expire. At this point, the client sends a DHCP request broadcast. Okay, so remember that. Okay, so it's very simple to install a DHCP, really. And after you will have to set up the option. What is the option? Uh, of course, <laughs> uh, a computer needs the, the IP of the gateway the IP of the DNS server, the summon mask, the list time, the pixie address, okay? And you can add this option, the HTTP option, uh, everywhere, on your server, uh, on your scope, on your class level, on a reserved client for the HTTP reservation, for example, okay? So before that, let's see how it's work, uh, work okay? Actually, I have one DHCP server. I'm not gonna install a new one, okay? Just to show you how it's working. So here I am, my AD. Let's close my AD. I'll go my here. And if I go back to my server manager here, you can see that I have a DHCP server. Okay, if I go here, I could see DHCP here. So the first time is that you just have to install your DHCP server. To install a DHCP server, the best is to have two DHCP server. Okay, so if I go here, the first time you go in Add Role in Services, you go here, and you select the first DC you have. And you type just DHCP server here. See DHCP server. So it has been installed. When your DHCP is installed here, you have to do authorization. What is authorization? Is the fact that at the beginning your DHCP server doesn't work. Okay, it doesn't give you any IP address. So you must go on your server and you must authorize it. Okay, you can also unauthorize it. If you do that. Of course, the server cannot anymore respond to client requests. So the first thing is that you must do that because if you do unauthorize, you do yes, the, the color will change, okay? It'll be red like this. So, of course, you must authorize that. And now if I do back here, it's green. After that, the second step when you create the HTTP server is to create a scope. Let me show you what is a scope. When you are here, I have a scope here, okay? Let me show you the, my scope. So you have to create a scope saying what is the star IP address, what is the end IP address, and the mask. So I can see here that I cannot really mo go more than 40 IP address, but I can change my scope and my mask. And this is my duration so for 8 hours, 8 days. Why fee is 8 hours, okay? Or I can say unlimited, okay? Normally I do limited to 8 days. I can have a description here, for example, scope 1 demo. Rock and roll. 
Here I have my DNS, so he will automatically update my DNS. This is fantastic, okay, I like it a lot. And this is the name protection for DNS. I can go advanced here. This is for the IP dynamically sent by DHCP, it can be by bootp, but actually it's by DHCP. And I can do okay here. After that, if I go in my address pool, I can see my pool and I can see my list. This is all the computer are actually using my DHCP server. For example, I have my post two, okay, second one. It's one, two, two. Okay, let's see if it's that. So let's go on my, on this one. And let's see if it's one, two, two. Let's change my keyboard. Just a problem with my keyboard again. Oh, it's okay. Okay, cool. So let's see if the address is the one I just showed you before. So it must be 2 2 at the end. And that's it. And I can see also if, my, if I make it a little bigger. that if I do a, a slash all, I can even see the, the DHCP server here, okay? So I, I'm sure it's it's coming from the DHCP server. Let's go back here. So here I have it here, okay? I have all of my other one here, blue, green, Superman, <laughs> and okay. And here I can see the lease expiration here, see? Lease expiration here. So the 11 here, no, you did not find it like that. Okay, yeah. The unique ID, network just projection, pro probation, expiration. You know, I have a lot of few column here. If I want, I can even, I think, add, add column. No, no, I cannot add column. Okay, it doesn't matter. It's not very important that. I can see all my, I can go here. I can, you know, uh, delete it, add to reservation. So I can now say that each time uh, this PC uh, have a reservation, okay, here. And my reservation saying that uh, uh, I have my MAC address of this uh, workstation. So he will all the time has this address, 222. This is important if you want the computer to, to only all, to have all, all the time the same address. Otherwise, you can go here in the reservation and just remove it. And you're sure that maybe it can change. Maybe. Okay. So um, what else? The option is very important, okay? This cup option. So each time a user asks for an IP, he will have also the name of my router, the name of my DNS server, and the name of my here DNS name, okay? So to go out to the internet, he will have this address here. Let's go on my on my workstation to show all that, okay? So you can see that my DNS server is this one, okay? So meaning that he knows that it's my DNS server. So each time I want to go outside, for example, if I go to my website, like Fluctuation IT, Fluctuation, by the way, I will change the name of my website because it's a little complicated. And if I go on my Fluctuation IT website here, okay, here, uh, you can see that I have, oh, sorry, I have my website here and here is all my 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 English course, okay. So all this all the, the uh, training English course, okay. You can have all them here, okay. So like you want. And here is some all my French ID course, okay. It's uh, uh, depending on what you want to do, but it's more like French, like uh, you know Windows, uh, uh, SCCN, English, or or like that, Okay, this is all my French courses. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I don't know why I'm here. Yeah. Okay. So I, this is my DNS server. Okay. So, so I can go out because it's through my DNS server. I can see that because here, if I go on my DNS server, where is my DNS server? Yep. It's here. I can see that, uh, if I go on Fiction IT, I can go here on my DNS server and I can see that all my computers has the address. So if I go back to my server manager, I can go here to my DNS server and I can see my forward loop zone, okay? 
and I can see all, if I go and view advanced, I can see all the cache lookups. So I can see that all my user went on, for example, uh, fluctuationit.com. And here, I know that all the user came here and, and I know that user searched for fluctuationit.com, for example, okay? If I go here, I can see fluctuationit. And I can see the alias name, okay, it's domain.podia.com. So I go directly to domain.podia.com here. Uh, but maybe a user came when on Microsoft, uh, okay, Office Client, for example, Target. And so I can see all my users in my company. If I have 10,000 users, I can see what they're doing actually, because all is going through this. <laughs> so I can see that user going PayPal or, or you know, special, special website. So, Pay attention about that, okay? YouTube, Xbox services, and things like that, okay? So this is my option here, meaning that I can add other option, okay? I can add so many options, okay? For example, I can add, you know, my, my Pixie Boot. Uh, we saw about that in the installation, remember, of my training. You can add a lot and enough option, okay? Add the option if if somebody asks you to, ask, to, add, to add an option, okay? So, Scope and reservation, okay. Reservation linked to a MAC address, remember? And here, I sh this is some example of your partial command that you can use to manage your DHCP, add a DHCP scope, get statistic, remove a scope, all what you want, you can do it here. DHCP authorization, remember that at the beginning, DHCP is not going to broadcast in the IP address, okay? So you can you can avoid this by authoring authorizing the server. If you do add DHCP server in DC, meaning that he will be authorized to give the IP address. Now, something very important is DHCP failover. Because the problem in my situation is that I have only one DHCP server, okay? So I have only one here. But if I go now on my second DC here, let's see if I have another DHCP server here. Maybe I have one. So let's go back here and let's type my password. And let's see if I have another D a DHCP server here. Okay, no, I don't have any DHCP server. So what I can do now is that I can add a new DHCP server on this server here. Let's do it, okay? But I'm not going to do anything on it, okay? So I'm going to type DHCP server and I'm just going to do next, 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 next. Nothing else. Why? Because there's a new feature with Fantastic that I love is the cluster. What is a cluster? A cluster is a way that you can add a second DHCP in a failover, okay? And it's the preferred option for high ability DHCP services. To configure DHCP failover, you establish a failover relationship between the two DHCP server and give the relationship a unique name. You have two solutions, load balance ratio, 50-50 or out standby. This is the best solution, why? Because load balance, he will say, okay, each server will be used. Out standby, meaning that only the first server will be used and the second server will be used in case of the first one goes down. Ooh, what a fantastic. And you can configure the MCLT parameter to specify the amount of time that a DHCP server would wait when a partner is unavailable before it assumes control of the address range, one hour. You can so also do auto stage switchover internal manually by changing the option partner down auto. You can do it by yourself, okay? So this is really fantastic. So let's go here and I can see that now I can do complete DHCP configuration. I'm just gonna authorize it, okay? So that's it, administrator, commit, and that's finished. Now, look, the beauty of the solution. If you go here on your DHCP server, you can see, oh, sorry, DHCP server, you can see that you have nothing here. See, nothing here, no scope, nothing, okay? So let's take the, the IP address of this server. And now we're going to add it to the first server. So it's uh, 101. Okay, cool. Let's go on my first AD. So I'm going to go here on my server here, the HTTP server. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go here and I'm going to configure failover. Okay. So this is the scope next. And I'm going to say, 192.168.11. 1. Um, 1. Add server. 
and and this alteration DHCP server. Okay, so select a server you want to add to your console. So um, it's gonna be browse uh, ad two. I think so. Yeah, that's better. And okay, let's do next. Now relationship name. Okay, it's gonna be ad two ad two. Maximum client lead time. Remember one hour. And let's say load balance or standby. If I do load balance, that's better as 1550, okay? State switch over interval, enable message notification. I'm gonna type one. This is to be able, this is a circuit key between my first and my second server. Next, and that's it. And that's finished, woohoo! This is amazing. So let's go on my second server now. And you will see something in fantastic. I will do just that and it's finished. He did all the work for me. This is the beauty here. I have everything here. I have my, I have here my, my scope here. So, so that's it. My I pull all the way here. This is amazing. Okay. And, and I can see here, deconfigure failover, replication, scope, replication relationship. So see, I can, I can, I can do so many things here. I can go back to my AD1. And here I can go back here to my, of course, configure replication failover, a scope here, okay, and and yeah, that's so starting replication of scope to partner one, so that's very very nice, okay. So this is the the DHCP way, okay. Yeah, it's very very nice. Okay, so um, I think it's okay. Um, maybe I can just show you some extra future. Okay, here you have your backup. You can backup the uh, directly your your DHCP configuration here. Here you can go on display statistic. You can see all the statistic you had <coughs> on your server. Okay, you can see how many offers you had. So this is very nice. Uh, you can have the uh, user class. The user class is a special thing for to 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 send information to some of your computer okay so so that's it i think we make a very nice you know small uh, resume of the dhcp okay in the next lecture we'll see information about the dns thank you ciao ciao bye